Okay, it's uh, 320, 332 on June 23rd. I'd like to call this Cato Parish Commission regular session meeting to order, please. Mr. Clerk, could we have a roll call? Commissioner Hopkins. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Commissioner Jackson. Here. Commissioner Young. Here. Commissioner Burrell. Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Gage Watts. Present. Commissioner Taliferro. Here, sir. Commissioner Atkins. Here. Commissioner Chavez. Here, sir. Commissioner Lazarus. Here. And Commissioner Epperson. All right, you have nine of 12 members present. That is a quorum. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Chavez, could you please lead us in the prayer? And uh, Sure. And Commissioner Taliferro, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Everybody, please stand for an invocation. All right, if everyone, please bow your head and join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you have blessed us with. Thank you for bringing us here to assemble and do the work of the parish. And Heavenly Father, I ask that tomorrow, as, as our friend Charlie, as his body moves from Florida back to Caddo Parish, that you keep the officers safe on their journey and that you be with the family and give them strength and let them know that you're with them and all the people that are mourning the loss of our dear friend Charlie that they, that they know that he's with you now and that he's in a better place and that he left a, a legacy of, of loving everyone and letting them see you through his life and through his works. In your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 I'll face the flag. Civilians may render traditional hand to heart. Hand to heart, thank you. <laughs> All military veterans may render a traditional hand brow salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Get a hung up on Thank you, Commissioner Chavez. Thank you, Commissioner Talferro. Mr. Clark, do we have any agenda additions? I'm not aware of any, unless you have any today. I'm not aware of any. Great, then we will move on to uh, visitors. Uh, where we do have citizens one scheduled comments. visitor today. You mean citizens' uh, comments, Mr. Clerk? I'm sorry, I went right over that, didn't I? Yes. Citizens' yes. comments. We do have citizens' comments. Uh, uh, citizens who would like to address the commission on any issue other than zoning, please fill out a comment card. Uh, they're located in the chamber foyer out there, and you can return them over here to my left uh, on the corner. Um, individuals' comments are limited to three minutes. I know that we have received at least three comments. Um, three or four comments so far and I've submitted those to the president but if anyone else would like to fill out a comment card uh, to, to be heard please uh, submit it over here and we'll get it turned in for you okay we'll get to those uh, in one minute Commissioner Gage Watts did you have something to add yes sir I would like to suspend the uh, rules to move up number 8-4 on the agenda Said. Uh, we have a motion from Commissioner Gage Watts to move up uh, Special resolution of appreciation for Ernst Lloyd Aaron Williams uh, to to now C Commissioner yes. Watts. Okay. A second. And uh, we have a second from Commissioner. I think actually, uh, didn't you? Already, Commissioner Burrell had already uh, seconded that motion. Okay, that's fine. Any comments, real quick, on why you'd like to do this, Commissioner Gage Watts? Yes, we would like to allow him to get to his radio show. Okay. All right, well, let's see if, if we can get the votes to move that up, and then we will proceed with our citizens' comments afterwards. Let's take a vote, please, Mr. Clerk. Okay. And, the, uh, and that motion carries with nine in support, none in opposition, and three absent. Okay, Commissioner Gage, what's the floor is yours. Thank you need to stand. I would like to make the motion to accept number 8-4. Second. We have a motion and a second. Everybody stand please. Okay, there is a motion and second to adopt a special re resolution 
uh, of appreciation for Ernest Lloyd Aaron Williams, otherwise known as Elaw. If you'd like, Commissioner Gage Watts, I'll go ahead and read the into yes. the record. And would Mr. Elaw like to come up to the front? All right. Uh, the resolution reads. Whereas the Cato Parish Commission notes with interest and satisfaction the significant contributions of citizens who have made significant and lasting positive impacts on Cato Parish, the state of Louisiana, and the United States of America. And whereas such an individual as Mr. Ernest Lloyd Aaron Williams, also professionally known as ELAW, an innovative contemporary broadcast radio personality and a lasting influencer and entrepreneur who has played a significant role in the shaping of Cato Parish's urban music scene. And whereas ELA has shaped the sound of Northwest Louisiana through many entrepreneurial initiatives, from local music store Music City to radio stations like KHAM, DJing for local parties, running venues like ENS uh, Metro Hall, video production ventures like Fat Tracks, or advertising promotions through MCS Ad Agency. And whereas Williams is known more for his ability, I'm sorry. Williams is known for more than his ability to keep up with the ever-evolving tastes of his audiences and his successful entrepreneurial endeavors, but also for graciously sharing his knowledge and using his skills and relationships to lift others up in the community, a remarkable service for which he humbly, humbly accepts very little recognition. And whereas Williams was educated at Cater Magnet High School and continued his studies at Louisiana Tech, where he earned a degree in finance and combined these skills with his self-taught musical expertise to open Music City only one year after graduating college, meaning he has been professionally influencing the local music scene for over 30 years now. Now therefore be it resolved by the Cato Parish Commission this 23rd day of June 2022 that it does hereby commend Mr. Ernest Lloyd Aaron Williams, ELAW, for his influence on the sound of Cato Parish an influence that is particularly meaningful as we celebrate African American Music Month. As part of this year's celebration, we proclaim June 25th, 2022 to be Mr. Ernest Lloyd Aaron Williams' ELAW Day. Be, be it further resolved that this commission does pray that Mr. Ernest Lloyd Aaron Williams may continue to enjoy the love of his fans, the respect of his peers, and the grace of his Lord through many years to come. We may be seated. <clears throat> Congratulations, Mr. Williams. Uh, Commissioner Gage Watts, did you have something to say? Absolutely. Um, you know, I am a proponent of always giving flowers to those while they can yet smell them. And he, this proclamation, this resolution only gives a glimpse of who you are to me and to this community. I have happened to know you for a very long time, something like all of my life maybe. <laughs> but you are an amazing son, great uncle, brother, cousin, and to the community, you are an invaluable asset. And we just appreciate everything that you do behind the scenes and we just wanna cheer you on because you are right on at the right time. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to publicly acknowledge you and thank you for all your services that you do for mankind. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gage Watts. Mr. Mr. Williams, I think we have a couple other commissioners on the board. Commissioner Burrell, did you have a comment? Oh, yeah, Mr. President. Uh, we had to come down here for me to find out what his name was. I've been spending money for several years. Uh, uh, he's promoting a lot of uh, uh, nonprofit uh, organizations, fundraising volunteers his uh, time and effort to do that. And there's not too many people that will do that. Uh, but uh, he, and for the last several years, has been promoting actually selling an evening uh, softball tournament, which has gotten a lot of good response uh, from you. Uh, as the um, mission lady said, uh, he's rather humble. He doesn't, he doesn't talk a whole lot to be a communicator. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, it's kind of interesting, as I said, I have to find out what Elon uh, meant down here. Right, that's right. But uh, that, since we have, uh, we congratulate you on all the work that you've done. Thank, Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. And did you, did, did you indicate you'd like I to also be added as a sponsor? Added. No, absolutely. Mr. Clark, if we could please add Commissioner Burrell as a sponsor to Mr. Williams' re uh, special resolution. And the station is in my district. 
Great. All right. Anything else? Seeing no one else on the board, thank you so much, Mr. Williams. Thank you for what you do for our community, and thank you for coming down today. Thank you. All right. Do I have a motion to go back into regular session? So moved. All right. So motion, motion by Commissioner Page Watts, a second by Commissioner Burrell to go back into regular session. Seeing no one opposed to that, we'll take that as an acclamation, move back into regular session. Um, and that brings us to citizens' comments. Ms. Brenda Brock. Welcome back, Ms. Brock. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for allowing me to talk because I know this is not on the agenda today, but I just feel compelled. And, you know, the Bible says where there is strife, there is every evil work. And my prayer for you people is for the strife to be gone. And my speech is going to be about that, that strife. The handout to you is a chapter out of the Holy Bible. And I want you to look over it, and I want you to read, especially the parts that are highlighted. It appears some of our Caddo Commission members are suffering with many hurts, habits, and hang-ups. And it's time to let them go. When you fail to see the purpose of your pain, your many wounds fester into chronic conditions that hold us back as a city. This is where we are. My handout is a copy of the portion of 28th chapter of Deuteronomy from our Bible. You can live under a curse all your life if you want to, but I choose to live under blessings. You can continue to be the tail and come in last if you choose, but I choose to be first and blessed. I'm here today because you as a whole are holding our city back. Some of you suffer from chronic deficiency of rehabilitation, and you seem to not want help to heal. I pray you change your mind unless you want to continue being last in everything you put your hands to. Our city deserves people to represent us as a whole body, lifting us up, moving us forward, not tearing us down and discrediting cultures, history, and people. Let me read Psalms 147.3. He heals, we're talking about Jesus. Jesus heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. <clears throat> Philippians 4.8. Focus your thoughts on what is true, noble, righteous, pure, lovable, or admirable. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. If you would work instead of pout, If you would work instead of pout, where did Stormy Gage Watts go? If you would work instead of pout about past grievances, we would be a great city. And there's one more thing that I want to add. If you people have blocked me and you're not getting my emails, and some of you are, and you don't communicate with me, and I can't ask you questions today, then how am I supposed to have a relationship with you? Thank you, Ms. O'Brock. Bonnie Farr. Welcome, Ms. Barr. Hello. I'd like to pray first before I start. <coughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I just come into your presence with thanksgiving in my heart, and I give you praise. Father, I ask you to come into this place and fill this place with your presence. Sit on the heads of each one of these commissioners like you did the upper room 120. Let them know that you're in, in, the, in the room. Guide them and protect them in the decisions that they have to make and be with us as we 
help to guide them in, in your word. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs 29, 2 says, Where the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people mourn. Where do you fit? This commission paid over $800,000 of our tax money for a privately owned monument and privately owned property on which it sat for almost 120 years. The history of the people. We do not pay our taxes for this purpose. <coughs> and I call this money to be repaid to us taxpayers. You employees of the people, by the fruit of what you bear or don't bear, we know you. And what we see is that you are dividing the people and you're dividing the community. And I charge you to stop it. You're discussing whether reparations of the past actions be repaid to some people. My ancestors are American Cherokee Indians. My, grand, my great grandmother was a full blood Cherokee. She went through the Trail of Tears from Georgia to Oklahoma. Have they ever asked for anything? Anything? No, they haven't. And we don't owe these other people one red dime, silver dime. These Indians suffered unmercifully. If you have never read the story, I suggest that you do, and some of you will be ashamed of what you're demanding. I command that you stop this nonsense. You're not hired for this kind of carrying on with our tax dollars, and they're not collected to pay for it. We refuse to pay for this division and this nonsense that you have created. I quote Patrick Henry in his 1799 speech. And listen closely. If you've tuned me out, tune this in. He said, let us trust God and our better judgment. to set us right hereafter. United we stand, <coughs> divided we fall. Let us not split into factions which must destroy that union upon which our existence hangs. Men and women of this commission, <coughs> I call you to seek God's guidance for what he wants. And if your decision does not line up, with his word, and you are divided, do like the 120 in the upper room did. They prayed until they were all in one accord. For God has authority over you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barb. <coughs> Mr. Brian White. Welcome back, sure. Mr. White. Well, thank you, sir. Can, can we go to the next one right quick uh, instead of myself? Can we go to the next one and come back to me, please? Oh, uh, uh, Caleb White? Yes, sir. Sure. Mr. Caleb White. Hello, Mr. White. Welcome to the commission. I'm glad to be here. <clears throat> Members of the Caddo Commission, my grandparents bought land many years ago outside the city limits of Shreveport because they wanted to enjoy many aspects of country living. In recent years, legislation has removed many of the reasons they purchased this land. I am speaking to you today to ask you to remove section 32-48 <coughs> because it prevents me from hunting and shooting on our family land. Right now, my dad, my sister, and I have lifetime hunting licenses for Louisiana. My dad and I have taken Hunter's education class 
And we also have a family rule that says we, before we discharge any firearms, we must clear the line of sight and beyond so we know where the bullet could land. We also use safety measures like keeping our finger off the trigger until ready to shoot and keeping the gun unloaded until we're ready to use it. Although we are completely legal and have all required licenses, Section 32-48 prevents us from shooting and hunting on our own land. This has devalued the licenses we have and has limited our land use. You may say we could go to a range and shoot, but have y'all seen the price of gas? We would also have to pay a membership fee. Why should we have to do that when my family has owned over 200 acres for almost four decades? Se Section 32-48 has taken away my family's freedom to use our land for recreational shooting and hunting purposes. Normally I go hunting with my dad, but I have also hunted with my mom when my dad was having eye surgery and also, and also my pappy. And these are some of my favorite memories. I was really upset when my, when my dad told, said we could not hunt any longer on our property. I respectfully ask the Cattle Commission to remove Section 32-48 to restore our ability to hunt and shoot on our own land. With regard to the 20 round magazine limit you, all, you are considering, Please know you are pu punishing innocent individuals like myself because, it, because my hunting rifle has a 30 round magazine. We would like to have our freedom and the use of our country land back. As Epic Epictetus, a Roman slave turned Greek philosopher said, is freedom anything else than the right to live as we wish? Nothing else. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you today. Thank you, Mr. White. Mr. Brian White. What I took away the other night, uh, commissioners, was that my representative, during his comment, noted uh, some, some items that makes me believe that his time hunting has either been only in a still hunt uh, or he has not hunted. He doesn't, uh, some of the concerns with regards to a fan of fire and things like that when you come into a stalking type scenario is not something that uh, was familiar during that process. Um, I also took away from it that the one, that, he, that there is a desire for uh, people that he represents to be present in the audience uh, other than when he other than when this commission has an ordinance in front of it that, that tries to restrict uh, weapons or to discuss kittens and puppies as it was said uh, I will try but with that said please don't be surprised if the people have opinions some will say I represent myself alone but since I'm here uh, I'd say I represent the interested parties and the interested constituents I also heard another note that concerned me with regard to the old documents such as the Constitution uh, must be rewritten for current time. Uh, it was and has been changed to fit current times uh, in many regards and the Supreme Court is under multiple of those considerations right now in addition to those amendments that were given to us by Congress. They're called amendments and that many in this room, all of them in fact, have benefited from those amendments. I would ask and highlight that uh, representatives please consider giving back the hunting and weapon rights uh, on property outside the city limits, even in the area inside the five mile boundary outside of Shreveport. I understand the conditioning that goes with that, but it is restricting rights and privileges of law abiding citizens. And it is making us into something that we are not. Uh, I would like those privileges back and many others that don't know they've been taken would as well. We don't live in the city of Shreveport for a reason and we live outside the city limits. Uh, of, I, I would ask for your consideration on that and a sponsor from one of you in, a, in acquiring that uh, change to the section 32-48. Um, I would like to tack on to a former speaker's notes uh, and note that a removal of an entity or a statue or an apology publication to only one entity is probably not the right path to unify something. It highlights an existing issue, true, and it apologizes for it, true but it does not create that unified stance. In reading the draft that was published last in the working group, uh, if those are facts that are true, we don't owe a, an apology to only one entity. We owe it to the constituents at large and my children for an inherited history. I understand what you're trying to get to, but I don't know that the path is correct. If that history is the reason for the apology, we don't need to be the divider we need, and a highlighter. We need to be the unifying factor across all the citizens in the parish. Thank you, Mr. White. 
Okay, I believe that is all of the uh, all of the citizens' comments. Is that right? You got, you got um, I think one or two more. You got one or two more that's coming. Citizens' comments? Did they, yes. they filled out a form? Yeah, they <laughs> filled it out. They just got to get it to Jim. Come here. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, some of you might know me, some of you might not. Um, I'll take this off. I'm a retired police officer captain from Shreveport Police Department. I live in the Caddo Parish um, jurisdiction. Um, Mr. Johnson, you are my commissioner. What I stand before you today is that some years ago, I petitioned the commission about a sewage ditch that runs sides of my house in my neighborhood in one North Place subdivision. Um, they paved the ditch entirety in the neighborhood and they stopped directly behind my house before you get to Highway 1. I have photos of um, them stopping the construction and telling me at the time that they couldn't go any further because the Dairy Queen that used to be there, that's a business, it's Hertz Chicken Buffet now, saying that they would not give them access to the ditch so they couldn't fix it. That's what they told me years ago. Now they're telling me that I own that ditch. So if I own that ditch, I have to fix the remainder of that ditch. So I posed a question to them, if I own that ditch, the water that flows under Highway 1 into that ditch, if I stop it, since I own the property, what could be done to me? He said, no, you can't do it because because I don't own a ditch right. So we figured out, they haven't told me yet if I didn't own a ditch, but I know I do not own the ditch. It belongs to Cattle Parish. All I'm asking today is that someone, he, photos, do you want them? If you could pass those to the clerk. I've attempted to repair whatever I could repair at my, on my side, um, although the land doesn't belong to me. Now, they temporarily fixed the part that they could get to from my land. And as time go on, the flood, the water, and all of that, it has damaged the bags of concrete that they put up to temporarily hold it. Um, it has fallen into the ditch. There's two lines that goes from the backside of my property to the ditch that goes across the ditch. The concrete bags are on, side, on top of those lines. I was instructed that one of the lines is a swept coal line and a gas line. If that gas line busts, what am I to do? What, is, what are my neighbors to do? I've, when I first brought this to his attention, when the business, the chicken buffet place, started remodeling. I went to him and I said, hey, do you have a problem with Caddo Parish sewage coming in and finishing the construction behind the house? Because that was the only holdup years ago. Got them in contact with Caddo Parish sewage. They talked to them, and they said no problem. But when my backdoor neighbor, who owns the building where the Caddo Sheriff Department is now, used to be, she purchased the building. Um, they told her that she owns the ditch also. Because it was adjacent to my property. So. Well, we, yes, Miss um, Lewis, we can't, we can't respond. We can only listen. But I think between Commissioner Johnson and the Public Works Director, is, is Public Works you. here today? Yes, sir. Jimmy's Jimmy's yes, over. Jimmy's over here. Um, Jimmy, can you can you take Miss Lewis aside and visit with her about this issue? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for coming down, Miss Lewis. Hopefully, Jimmy can help you out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Right. Chair, uh, Dr. Wilson, this yes. is the same ditch that I sent you the email on this week. Okay. Yep. Okay. We good there? Yeah. Mr. Clerk, any other uh, citizens' comments? 
I do not have any more requests for citizens' comments at this time. So All right. Well, let's move on to let's move on with the agenda, please. Great. We'll move along to visitors, where we do have one scheduled visitor today, and that is Dr. Martha White. Hello, Dr. White. It's been a while. I'm glad. It has. <laughs> I don't think it, it seems like we saw you on Zoom most of the time previously. Yeah. So, well, I'm happy to be able to be here in person <clears throat> and talk to y'all. Um, I was asked to give an update about COVID, just kind of where we are. I know people have had questions about monkeypox and then about the new COVID vaccine that came out. <clears throat> So just so you know, um, there is a spike of COVID going on. You haven't heard a whole lot about it. It's not causing a lot of people to be hospitalized, thank the Lord. Um, it is um, about 10 days ago, we had about seven people in the hospital here we are up to about 37 so at one point we i think we got to a high of 56 but that's for our whole region so that's not a large number you know for a long time we couldn't get below triple digits so we're happy um, that we're still staying at a relatively low number by far the majority of those people are not on ventilators so they're just hospitalized and um, doing well um, this um, Omicron variant that we're seeing spikes of is making people feel pretty bad. They're feeling very flu-like, flu um, a lot of sore throat complaints, really, really bad headaches. <clears throat> had, ha have had people call and ask me about could I have viral meningitis, that kind of thing. So they're really having bad headaches. Just FYI, that could be a sign that you may be sick with COVID, maybe do a home test and make sure that you're okay so you're not spreading it to anybody. Um, our numbers for the last week or so have been in about 2,000 to 2,800 new cases a day in the state. Um, that's probably about 40% of what is actually out there <clears throat> because most people, you know, probably are not getting tested or are home testing. So um, we probably are seeing probably about double that um, really in this state um, number of case-wise. I think all of us, if you talk to people around you, have people we know who are sick right now with COVID, have people out of our departments or friends that are sick. So it is out there in our community. It's just something to be aware of, something to um, make sure that you're protecting yourself um, when you're out and about, especially in airports, especially if you're gonna take a plane. I know you don't have to, but really consider wearing your masks. We're having a lot of people come back from trips and that's where they end up um, sick and then they end up giving it to someone else that perhaps they didn't know they were getting sick and they end up with several people out in a, de in a department or a section. So that's kind of really all I have to say about COVID unless anybody has any questions. Um, we do expect that there'll probably be another spike in the fall. Um, don't know whether we're gonna see a different strain or anything of concern to be worried about, but we'll you know, keep a close eye on that for you. Um, Monkeypox is. Dr. White, thank you very much. I see that Commissioner Chavez has a question regarding COVID. Oh, if we may, you, I know you, you don't see it. He, I just have a. a okay. Tells me. Go ahead, I Dr. had a citizen. We stream these live on Facebook, so we get text messages during the, uh -huh. the meetings. But a citizen asked, "Did uh, was anyone hospitalized after they got the COVID shot?" So we had in our area in the state there were eight people that were hospitalized. Um, after they got shots, just to monitor, we had no one that had any um, true adverse effects and nothing that when they went through the VAERS system could be defined as an adverse reaction. That's in the entire state. I know we had two here. Um, one was a person who passed out, um, which is not uncommon when you get a shot, but to be on the safe side, they did admit him and um, monitored him and he was fine overnight. Thank you for answering. 
Thank you. President. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Burrell. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. President. Well, based upon that, I, I just got back from Mexico, and, and um, uh, well, nobody was wearing a, a, a mask on the, on the plane, so I guess I need, well, I, I took my uh, <clears throat> COVID tester mm -hmm. uh, uh, with me. But my question to you is, um, given the fact that um, I know there is a first and second booster, but they also talked about third booster. Are you recommending a third booster after the second? So right now what they're recommending is that you get your two shots and then the booster. And if you're over 50 or if you have any immunocompromise, that you get a fourth shot. Now, if you are someone who is severely compromised or what they call moderately to severely compromised, someone who's undergoing chemotherapy, someone who has a, a significant autoimmune disease where their doctor says, I think you should get an extra dose, there are some people that they have recommended they don't actually call it a booster. They're calling it um, a fourth dose, and then you get another booster. You get your boosters. So um, it's, an, it's just an extra dose added in there. It, um, a supplemental dose is what they called it for those people who are severely compromised. Um, and, but for the rest of us, they're saying if you're over 50, you can get that fourth dose, but they have not recommended a fifth one yet. Um, Looks like things, antibody levels are mm -hmm. staying good for at least six months, so we'll have to see where that goes, you know, when we get towards that, whether they'll add another one on. When my wife posed a question, my wife posed a question to me uh, about doses versus boosters. Uh, are the boosters um, a lesser amount? Why do they call them necessarily boosters? It's the same amount, right? They it's are. The same product. Okay. It's just a, the, they're the same dose. Yes, right. sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Burrell. Commissioner Gage Watts. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Dr. White, for coming down today. Yes, um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. If patients or are you aware of any patients who have been fully vaccinated and received their boosters, um, tested for COVID, but they're testing negative with all symptoms? So, no. You sh if you have COVID, you should eventually test positive for COVID. Um, what we do know is with Omicron and with these variants, we have seen people test negative when they, even though they have, may have symptoms for a day or two. Mm -hmm. What I recommend is that you test again, maybe around day three of your symptoms um, or, or a little bit beyond because we are seeing them then turn positive. If you're really concerned and you don't want to wait that extra day, you can get a, a, a true PCR test. Good. and not a rapid test yes i wanted to make sure that um, we raised awareness about the importance of keep testing even if you still have those symptoms and right. you are testing negative and that those tests are still available that you can still order them and you can get up to eight tests now right okay. and um the office of public health actually has some home tests available too so like if a church wants to give some out or an entity a business or whatever wants to give some out to their employees we do have those available that we can help pass those out all right is there a specific number or email that they need to contact to get that information so i'm just going to give you the general office number and just say i'm calling about home tests okay and it's six seven six seven four eight nine all right six seven six seven four eight nine and that's our regional office so anyone in any of my parishes can call that number awesome thank you you're welcome thank you commissioner gage watts commissioner jackson hey doc how you doing hey, i'm good uh just checking to see if do we still have access to uh are, are the uh, strike team still available or how is that working so the strike teams are still available for vaccine Mm -hmm. They're no longer available for, for testing, testing uh -huh. except for there. There is a contract for that K through 12 testing mm -hmm. when we go back to school. Mm -hmm. They actually can test, like at camps. We mm -hmm. had an outbreak at a little camp. They were able to go and help use that contract to test as well. Mm -hmm. And um, do we contact you, or do we still just contact Dr. Vancheri? Either one. Okay. We're, we work closely. Okay, and yeah. and those are Department of Health or those 
Who, who's doing that, For those the, vaccines? Is that the National Guard? Or? No, no, it's um, Dr. Van Cherry's strike. It's his, it's his team, team of okay. nurses. Okay. Yes. okay, all right. All right, yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. That's it for me. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Jackson. And Dr. White, I don't see anyone else on the board, so thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us, and thank you for your services to Cato Parish. Did y'all want to hear about monkeypox? Oh, sorry. Yes, please. Yes. Just asking. So, just so you know, monkeypox is a, is a zoonotic disease. It's been in parts of Africa, endemic in parts of Africa for decades. Um, has not really been seen outside of those areas, except for for people who had traveled to those areas that occasionally brought it outside, but never really took foothold anywhere else. This is the first time it's ever really truly moved outside of Africa, those countries in Africa. So it is a little bit concerning. It's about, we're up to about 1,800 cases. We're, I think, in about 22 states. There are no cases in Louisiana. We have tested a couple of people here. They were negative. <clears throat> but um, the good thing about it is, you know, most people do really well. It starts with a flu-like illness. Doesn't everything start with a flu-like illness? So that's why doctors get confused all the time and have to run all those tests on you. But um, it starts with a flu-like illness. And then you tend to get these lymph nodes. And then you get these sores. They start flat. And then they raise. And they even get on a little stalk. It's called pedunculated. And they get full of fluid and pus. That's what's called the pox, right? <clears throat> um, the weird thing about these, this virus that has moved outside of the endemic areas is that it's not quite acting the same. So while normally you knew the pathway, it, was, it would act in this specific way, <laughs> this virus is, while it is orthopox, it is monkeypox, it is not necessarily acting in that same way. Some people don't have that prodrome. In fact, they'll just break out in the rash first and then have the lymph nodes. Um, they are seeing it in some people um, in, on the genital areas which is very not normal. Normally it starts in your mouth, you have it on your hands and your extremities and then your trunk and you don't see it genitally. Well, they're seeing it on the genitals. So what we wanted doctors to know and we want people to know is that those lesions on the genitals, make sure you don't just assume it's an STD. We see STDs in our health units all the time but we want to make sure docs consider monkeypox if they see um, these vesicular lesions, which could be anything from syphilis to chancroid to all kinds of things. We want to make sure they think so they don't catch it or spread it or anything like that. It's not just on um, spread because people are, it's close contact to the pox, but you know, so it's not just by sex, but it's by close contact to that area, correct? So, um, but it's not just genitally. So we don't want to make people think that's the only way you can get it, but you do have to have prolonged co close contact to those lesions. Not easy to spread. That's why you're not going to see people quarantined um, and all of those things. They're going to be monitored if we have them, but it's not the concern. Now, I will tell you my concern, <clears throat> and y'all know I always tell you what I think might happen next. Um, if you look at what else is endemic in these same areas, polio and measles. And when you look at the extreme level of anti-vax sentiments, which everybody has the right to feel the way they want to feel, but when you look at that level and the number of people who have chosen to not get vaccinated, the idea that we might see children with polio in this country is frightening to me. Now, will that happen? I don't know. But it's that when you see one virus move out of an endemic area, it's, it's not a far leap to think that another one could. So that's just where I want to encourage people to please get their children vaccinated with those routine childhood vaccinations. They've been given for decades. They're very safe. And we definitely, people my age and older, we remember people who were, I, I'm not old enough to remember people who had polio, 
but I am old enough to have had teachers who were left with um, deficits and dis you know, had some disabilities that were remnants of their polio as, ch as children. So we don't want to go backwards like that. Thank you, Dr. White. I think uh, Commissioner Jackson's on the board. Yes. Uh, again, I, I had another, I had a constituent reach out as you were talking, presenting, and asked um, what is the earliest age? Um, what is the earliest age a COVID vaccine is available for a kid now? So it's Can you been. Can the mic, Doc? Yes. Kinda, it's, it's, I'm sorry, you know. Good. <laughs> but it's um, been approved now for six months and up. Um, we, there, people are just now starting to order it, so it may not be available um, in your physician's office. We ha we do have it in our health units. If you get Moderna, it's two doses because they give a larger dose. If you get um, Pfizer, it's three doses. You, you said give them a donut. If you get Moderna, oh Moderna, it's okay, two I'm doses, sure. and okay, if you I get Pfizer, older. it's three. So, but um, it, yeah, it's the same vaccine, it's just at a smaller dose and it's been tested. They actually did three rounds of trials on mm -hmm. these children because they wanted to encourage people that it is safe and it has been tested. And it was six months. Six months. So um, Pfizer is six months to four years and Moderna is six months to five years. Okay, and then my last question is on the uh, just vaccine, vaccines in general, um, school-based health centers, are y'all seeing any success with, um, or do you follow that uh, with school-based health centers getting vaccines or uh, are able to get those in those students vaccinated, able to close that gap, particularly uh, with HEDAs, uh, well child, those kind of things. Right. I know that was a big push by Louisiana Healthcare Connections at one time. I know the MCOs were trying to do their push, but what about those that are not necessarily a uh, Medicaid population? Or is that really just the focus is the Medicaid population? No, well, so to be in school by age four, you have to have X number of vaccines there. It's required for, or, or you have to have a waiver, um, which some parents do um, choose to do. Mm -hmm. Um, my concern, like I said, is how many will do that. Um, it is, and but we it's up have to the school board to grant it, or is it up to Bessie yes. to grant it? Yes. School board, the local school board. Right. Grant and okay. so what I will say is that um, we have had very successful vaccination okay. rates by four, meaning like 98, 99%. Okay. However, they're not always up to date. Gotcha. So they wait until they have to get them till they're four. And so they are at risk for like um, uh, croup or, you know, um, pertussis, whooping cough. You know, that's a big one that kids really need to get their vaccines when they're little um, babies. And so sometimes they'll wait till they go to school and to their t it's time for them to go to school and they're actually behind, but they do catch them up by four. Are we doing any coordination with the community action agency? Because they're, they're, they're catching them at a very early age, Dr. Wilson. Mm -hmm. Are we doing anything with the community action agencies? We have not yet. Do y'all think that there could be some synergies? Sure. Absolutely. Because I mean, they're catching them at Head Start pre-K. We do. Now, we do go and speak to Head Start to all the parents. We do try to bring vaccinations to Head Start. So. Mm -hmm. Um, but we can continue to grow whatever interactions that you and so And so it's a requirement to enter the school system, but it's not it sounds like it's not a requirement to start Head Start. I, I don't know. It is. Is it for Head Start? They have to have them for Head Start. Too. They have to have them for, can y'all check to verify mm -hmm. to see if, they, if we, if they have to have them to go into community action agency? I would imagine that they would have to. I would to hope so. Like and if not, can, if not some coordination, sure. I think you can see some good coordination there sure. um, with those families. So right around vaccines. Yeah, but I know that's just a captive audience. I didn't hear sure. you. I heard you talk about schools. I didn't hear you talk about Head Start. Right. Okay. But if we can find that out, and maybe whatever we can do to coordinate in that area. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. That's it. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. I'm seeing no one else on the board. Okay. Is, is that it, Dr. White? I think so. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You Thank you all. for coming down. Y'all have a great. <laughs> All right. Uh, that brings us to adopting regular session minutes, which Most are approved. Approved.
Second. Well, I think it was uh, Commissioner Swimmingate Dewant was made the motion and Commissioner Burrell seconded it. Uh, may we vote on that, please, sir? I hope we can put a read on it. Hold on. No, I'm I missed. I don't see nobody out there. All right, and that motion carries with nine in support and three absent, none in opposition. Uh, that brings us to special resolutions, where we have a number of special resolutions before you today. Um, the first one is a special resolution of recognition and appreciation for the Philadelphia Center. Commissioner Young, how would you like to address Second. Um, well, if we're going to englobe them, we can do them as a group. There's no one here to receive this one at present. Okay. Um, let's figure out which... Which of these special resolutions uh, have recipients in the audience today? No, Commissioner Gage, I'm there. looking at you. No, no, no others are here. How would you like to handle these? Are you are you comfortable with? Um, Move into the Englobo. Yes. Move to the all right. Second. So we have an Englobo from Commissioner Gage Watts and a second. I'm, I'll give the second to Commissioner Young since he raised it initially um, to Englobo and um, adopt. and adopt these these five remaining special resolutions. Do, do we want to read? Does anyone want them read or not? No. Okay. Hold on one sec. We'll get to you. All right. I don't see. I don't hear a need to read them specifically. I think that Commissioner Burrell is on the board. Uh, go ahead, Dr. Commissioner Burrell. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to uh, to request to be added to the Philadelphia Center to be in my legislative district, and I work with those people closely. And. Um, Let's see, I think I, I'm on Dr. Belton, I think. Uh, World Sickle Cell Anemia Day, if it's okay. Absolutely. And the African American Music Appreciation. I just want to add it to the, to the safety team. Okay. I think I covered it all, Mr. President. <laughs> okay, did you get those, Mr. Clark? I, I did, I believe. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Commissioner Burrell. Commissioner Jones. <coughs> yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Clark, I also would like to be added to uh, all of these resolutions. That's okay with the authors. Absolutely. Okay. Seeing no one else on the board, I think we are ready to um, to vote on the Englobo resolutions. <coughs> and that motion carries with eleven in support, none in opposition, and one absent. Uh, that brings us to communiques and committee reports. Do we have any administration responses from requests from commissioners? Anybody have anything? Commissioner Jackson. Yes, uh, Dr. Wilson, do yes, we sir. have that uh, information that I had requested last meeting? Which one? Oh, yeah, um, on the um, census stuff for the CCC, the medical information. Yes, sir. Dr. Yes, Wilson, sir. Dr. We, Wilson we, we can't hear you. Uh, yes, uh, Commissioner Jackson wanted us to get the um, the number of the medical expense and patients, and uh, we are in the process of getting that. We asked for the information, and it hadn't been forthcoming yet, but we did make the request. Okay. We'll All right. Do we know an ETA on it? Do we have an ETA on it? Uh, I'll follow up. Yeah, we'll follow up. Okay. Okay. All right. Appreciate it. Thank mm -hmm. you. Is that it, Commissioner Jackson? That's it for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Chavez. Thank you, President. Dr. Wilson, uh, Mr. White came down here. I'll yield if uh, Mr. Johnson wants to I go. go. Uh, I was you. on the board. Uh, I don't have. Oh, I have you on the board after Chavez. But well, I was up there with Jackson, so but I don't know what happened. Sorry. Go I, ahead, Commissioner Chavez. I can. I can wait. No, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Mr. White came down here. He said uh, Section 32-48 restricted his son's uh, right to sh uh, hunt on his land, and that we enacted that. Um, do you know what, do you, or do you need time to research that? I, I'm unclear on um, if we pass anything to restrict. Uh, I'm, I'm aware of what it is. State, uh, the parish ordinance prohibits the intentional discharge of a firearm within one mile from a dedicated residential subdivision that is within five miles of the city limits. So, for instance, uh, if you think of a dedicated residential subdivision, say, Timberline, for instance, comes to mind. The parish ordinance would prohibit the dis intentional discharge of a firearm within one mile of that subdivision. Was this done in 2015? 
Uh, this has been on the books for quite a while. Let's see. It was adopted. It was uh, there in 1976. Before the NRA took over. Okay, so this is this is, and, and I'm and for the current board. Um, it, it made it sound like it was something that we did. So no, I was curious to figure out what it was. It was most that that's that section of the code of ordinances was most recently amended in 2008. I don't know uh, offhand what that uh, amendment was. <clears throat> okay. Uh, would you do me a favor and send me that uh, legislation, Attorney Bernstein? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Point Thank of clarification. Uh, yes, and, and Commissioner Bernstein, or, pardon me, Mr. Bernstein, if you could just send that to all commissioners. He just got just to sure. I'll be back to you. Point of clarification. Yes, Is sir. he sending the 1978 or Six. the 2008 or both? The, the, it was, that section was in the code as adopted in 1976. It was amended once in 1985 and was amended again in 2008. So what specifically is he sending to? I'd like to see, well, certainly the most, the current legislation. Current. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay. All right, uh, Commissioner Young. I'm oh, sorry, are you done, Commissioner Chavez? Yes, sir. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Commissioner Young. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank, you, thank you, Mr. President. I had a question about, um, Airbnb regulation, and I see that uh, Mr. Gene is here from the MPC. I wonder if I could ask him. Is that okay with you, Dr. Wilson? Yes, fine, sir. Right. Great. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Hi, Mr. Gene. Nice to see you. Thank you Good for to see you. thank you for being here. Um, a friend of mine yesterday was um, telling me that. Uh, she was concerned that she wouldn't be able to get her air, uh, a property licensed as an Airbnb because um, she's heard that it's a very difficult process and they sometimes get turned down. I wonder if you could tell me anything about that. Well, <clears throat> there's a short-term rental uh, ordinance on the books. Uh, what sometimes is happening is that if you're within 500 feet of another short-term rental, mm -hmm that requires a special use permit. So I don't know the exact case, but okay. I would imagine that may be what so your constituent is speaking of. How, so it, how, it, many, how many of those have you had to do, special use permits? Is it a lot? We've only had one so far, okay. but we've had some other inquiries, so we expect to have more of them. Okay. Right. So, um, and when people apply for the permits, do they, do they normally get approved? Or yes. Oh, yeah, it's you know fairly you know now as far as the process is when it becomes becomes a special use, uh, use permit, um, we had one approved. We also had that decision. Um, uh, they filed a, ver a uh, an appeal mm -hmm. to that decision. Uh, so we've only had one so far. We've actually had the special use permit, but okay. we issue the licenses quite frequently. But obviously, the more you begin to get out there, the more that potential well, as you may be yeah. within that that proximity so that reason that was paid, put into place was so we wouldn't have <coughs> a clustering where entire communities would turn into uh, short-term rental communities and so it was, it was intended to at least put some public scrutiny and allow uh, neighboring residents to to uh, voice their views on on that particular uh, it would be a public process otherwise it is an administrative process Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, I, I had one other question about the um, uh, issue that uh, Commissioner Chavez was talking about, which is the um, uh, zoning. Is it? Uh, I don't know. Is it? It's in our UDC. Um, the rule about um, not shooting within the one mile. Is that within the UDC? No, Attorney sir. Christine? It's not. It's not. So it's not a zoning issue. Ordinance. No, it's not a zoning issue. Oh, it's just one of our own ordinances. It's one of your so ordinances. So we can change it right away. Huh? So we could change that right away by a vote if we wanted to. You could change that by adopting an ordinance amending that co that section Great. of the code. All right. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you so much, Mr. Dean. Nice no problem. Thank you. Get me up here and you want to keep me, right? Got a question. Uh, uh, Commissioner Johnson's been waiting patiently, so let, let us get to him. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, Stephen, um, piggybacking on what Commissioner Young was talking about with the Airbnb, um, how would the public know that they would need to get a permit for Airbnb if they stay out, say, outside of the city limits and 
basically they don't really stay in Shreveport a lot. They move around. They got multiple houses. And so while they are gone, they decided, well, I'm going to just go ahead and do this one as an Airbnb. Okay. So what, what we've done and, and is that that's a very good question. Is that what we've done is we've contracted with a uh, software company called Deckard. And what they do is they have, they go into all the different platforms where Airbnbs are, are beginning to, you know, to advertise for their spaces. And we will be sending out a courtesy. When we see those in and they, we see that they're not licensed, we will send out a courtesy, a courtesy notice to let them know that they need to get registered. Okay. So, so that's basically how we're going to be able to. But we, you know, when you when you when you have ordinances, you know, you try to make sure that you you, you have public hearings. You try to reach out to the public. We've met with the, a lot of different constituents about that. But still, like you said, there are people that still don't know that we have this. And so, a lot of times, the way they find out is they they end up you know listing them, and then and then they'll get a, a notice saying that they they right. need to exactly because two years ago it wasn't an issue, but now. They're thinking about it, and so they don't know. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I had. All right. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank um, you. Yeah, I, well, I guess it was yeah. Commissioner Johnson still. I'm still. Before. Yeah, I'm still. I'm still going. So today we had a um, ARP meeting today and met with the consultants that are that are handling the uh, different um, groups that we have subbed out money, potential money for. And uh, they kind of updated us on the process of how that would happen. Um, if they get past all of the hurdles, um, basically there are some federal guidelines, state guidelines, and they're creating um, parish policies to put in place. It would also be a mandatory meeting with each one of those organizations to be here or to, to do it by Zoom to, to uh, basically understand the process of how the money would be dispersed because the money will not be given up front. They would have to go out and utilize the money, invoice the parish, and then the parish would then send them a check for reimbursement showing that they have utilized the money per the guidelines. So um, we talked about that. Also, I wanted to address some of the comments I heard earlier. Um, you know, there are certain key words, I'm, like I mentioned when we talked about the juveniles and they do they rap songs, they can talk in general codes, and a lot of people don't pick up on what they're actually saying. But today, I've heard some code words that I picked up on it. I don't know if everybody else did, but my ears did. Um, one of them was, you people. The other one was, these people. What was it? You people. Oh, okay. So. I know what those code words mean, um, and it's not about me living in the past. It's about what's happening in the present. It's just a, a new day, different time. Um, I consider myself blessed and highly favored. I don't consider myself doomed and distraught and all that. I'm very easy to talk to if you want to talk to, but it's, it's easy to talk about things if you don't have those wounds. If you're on the other side, given the wounds, it's nothing for you to talk about. Um, the young man that mentioned about how we did something or how I proposed the um, 20 rounds, um, looked to me that he's not old enough to drive. So it <coughs> doesn't impact him anyway. And if he's going out somewhere on their property, they're never on the street, he can go out and shoot back there if that ordinance wasn't in place. Um, I'm looking out for the whole of the parish, not just a certain pocket, but as a whole. And the way that crime is happening in Shreveport, it happens everywhere in our parish. Not just in Shreveport, but it can go way up in Odessa. Uh, Ida, it can go everywhere. So nobody lives in a plastic bubble or a bulletproof bubble. I would say a bulletproof bubble. Uh, things can happen anywhere, and so I'm looking for ways to protect all people, all colors, all nationalities, all levels of income, not just a certain pocket. So if that's wrong, then 
nobody should have elected me the last two terms and this term. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Uh, Commissioner Vice President Burrell. Thank you, Mr. President. I had a question on the Airbnb. The gentleman left? Nope. Oh, you got a replacement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Change it out. <clears throat> I can answer short terminal questions. Okay. Well, uh, uh, my question uh, was um, or is uh, are Airbnbs considered commercial, quasi commercial, quasi residential, or what? Uh, well, in order to operate a uh, Airbnb or short term rental as they're defined in the code, uh, you need to have an occupational license. Um, but so they can operate in residential areas. It's considered a business? Yes. Which, because which it, there are commercial. taxes taken out uh, that the city and the parish remit. Okay, having an occupational license, then you're basically considered a business, short term Correct. business. Okay. Would that be, that doesn't affect the zoning? You have commercial? I, I, I look at business. Well, well the, under the use matrix, their uh, Airbnbs are allowed in all districts where you can have residential. So with all, you know, RA all the way through, even R2 and R3, uh, also you can, if you have residential up above commercial, like in C1, C2, C3, that's allowed. So. It, and when you say temporary, meaning so many days? Uh, 30 days or less. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Burrell. <coughs> Commissioner Chavez. Thank you, President. Uh, Dr. Wilson, uh, they brought up a good point from the MPC. I, I like how they're uh, being proactive now with uh, obtaining the address and sending out the postcard or sending out the, the courtesy letter. Mm -hmm. And I know we have our public publication on how we send out information for us the the, the state <coughs> statute still dictates that we have to but I think we should start working on a trend where we can identify when we have to send out specific zoning or ordinances that affect uh, just a specific neighborhood like a block or a couple blocks that we could send them a letter we have so many local businesses now that that have <coughs> uh, mail direct mail capabilities that when we get constituents that come down here and they say, well, I didn't know about it, and we say, well, we, pub we published it in the newspaper or it was on our website, I think us being a little more proactive to actually sending it to it, at least the surrounding blocks <coughs> to, that, to whatever zoning case that we encounter, I think that would be us being a little more proactive uh, and we could fall in line with how the MPC is, is, is changing the way that they do business. And, and I like that and I applaud Alan for doing that. Thank you, President. Thank you, Commissioner Chavez. Commissioner Jackson. I had a question on the zoning, but I'll get with you after. You gonna be around or y'all swapping out? No, I'll be here today. Okay, appreciate it. Is that it? That's it. Okay, seeing no one else on the board, <coughs> Mr. Clerk. All right, that brings us to the uh, President's report. Did you have one today? I do, I, I would like to comment briefly. Um, Last week, uh, the African American Chamber of Commerce had their awards dinner, and um, I learned that I might be on. I learned that I might be on the uh, on the agenda for that event that that day, and um, I just wanted to apologize to those of you who were, who were there. Commissioner Jackson, I believe, covered for me. I appreciate that. Commissioner Johnson was there, and Commissioner Gates. We Gage all covered for you. Pardon? We all covered for you. <laughs> We all covered for you as a oh, group effort. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to apologize. I didn't intentionally uh, skip the event. Um, I asked. I asked when, when, once I heard about it. I asked the clerk to check on. He's like, you know, we we couldn't really find anyone who knew if I was supposed to be there or not. So when I found out I was on the agenda, I was very embarrassed about it. But I apologize. You know, I just didn't know that I was being expected to attend and. Uh, speak so as you as you all know there's lots of emails that come through with invitations uh, and you know some things you you can make it to and some things you can't but if someone had reached out to me and let me know that I was on the agenda I certainly would have rearranged my schedule so uh, I apologize for that I was embarrassed to find that I was on the agenda and wasn't there to participate so they, my, they weren't roasting you were they 
They may have been. <laughs> I wasn't there. We are, but uh, you know, we all we have other demands as well. Yes. So that's really all all I had. Thank you very much, Mr. Kirk. We can continue on. Okay, that brings us uh, to public hearings on zoning ordinances and cases. Uh, we don't have any scheduled today, so that'll bring us forward to public hearings on ordinances, where you do have uh, a couple scheduled today. Uh, would you like me to go ahead and read those at, at the same time and open one here? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, the first item is 12.1, a public hearing for ordinance number 6237 of 2022. That's an ordinance regarding an exchange of roadways with the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development in connection with extending Louisiana 3276 to Louisiana 1 to authorize the exchange of certain portions of parish roads in return for certain portions of state highways to authorize the parish administrator to execute agreements as necessary to accomplish that exchange and otherwise provides with respect thereto. The next item is a public hearing for ordinance number 6239 of 2022. That's an ordinance amending the budget of estimated revenues and expenditures for the Riverboat Fund to provide an appropriation for Charles Johnson Ministries Incorporated and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Okay, the floor is now open for public hearing. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to comment on ordinance number 6237 or ordinance number 6239? If so, please come to the podium and share your thoughts. Seeing no one, the public hearing is now closed. We can continue on, Mr. Clark. Okay. Um, that brings us the next item. We don't have any scheduled zoning ordinances for final passage today, so we'll move forward to ordinances for final passage, uh, where we'll discuss the same two that just came up under public hearing. The first is ordinance number 6237 of 2022. That's the ordinance regarding an exchange of roadways with the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development in connection with extending Louisiana 3276 to Louisiana 1 to authorize the exchange of certain portions of parish roads in return for certain portions of state highways to authorize the parish administrator to execute agreements as necessary to accomplish that exchange and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Jackson to approve and a second by <coughs> Commissioner Stormy Gage Watts. Commissioner Jackson, any comments? Uh, can we move to, I'll make a substitute motion in Globo and approve 6237 and 6239. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to in Globo 6237 and 6239. Any comments? Okay, uh, seeing no one on the board, let's vote. <laughs> All right, and that motion carries with, uh, I believe, 10 in support, one in opposition, uh, and one absent. And uh, that brings us to zoning ordinances for introduction by title, where we have two today. Uh, the first item, 15.1, is to introduce ordinance 6242 of 2022 in relation to zoning case 21-39-P. That's an ordinance to amend volume two of the Code of Ordinances of the Parish of Caddo as amended the Caddo Parish Unified Development Code by amending the zoning of property located on the north side of Wells Island Road, approximately 800 feet northwest of Reverse Drive in Caddo Parish, Louisiana, from R17 single family residential district to NA natural areas district to, oh, oh, I'm sorry, from R17 single family residential district and NA natural areas district to OS open space district and to otherwise provide with respect there too. That's in district three. The next item is to introduce ordinance number 6243 of 2022. That's in relation to zoning case 22-7-P that's an ordinance to amend volume two of the Code of Ordinances of the Parish of Caddo as amended, the Caddo Parish Unified Development Code, <coughs> by amending the zoning of property located on the north side of Old Mooringsport Road, approximately 2,350 feet east of North Market Street, Caddo Parish, Louisiana, from Tract A being RA Rural Agricultural Zoning District to R17 Single Family Residential, and the Tract B being from RA Rural Agricultural District to R15, <coughs> single family residential district and otherwise provide with respect there too. That item is in district two. Okay. And that brings us to ordinances for introduction by title, where we have just one item today, 16.1, is to introduce ordinance number 6240 of 2022. That's an ordinance to adopt section 12-27 relative to occupational licenses and acting provisions regarding video poker truck stops 
Perry Mutual facilities and off-track wagering facilities to prohibit within a certain distance from particular facilities or properties and otherwise provide with respect thereto. That brings us to the approval of work session minutes, which okay. should be attached to your agenda. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Stormy Gage Watts, a second by Commissioner Jackson to approve the work station the work session minutes. Let's vote, please. And that motion carries with 11 in support and one absent. That brings us to resolutions, and today we have uh, resolution number 35 before you. That's a resolution authorizing the parish attorney's office to request an opinion from the Louisiana State Attorney General's office regarding the authority of the parish commission to pass an ordinance requiring that certain types of ammunition be carried separately from the gun and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Move to adopt. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Johnson, a second by Commissioner Stormy Gage Watts to adopt resolution number 35. Any comments, Commissioner Jackson? Johnson? No, no I think we talked about this sure. more than enough. So. Okay. Let's vote, please, Mr. Clark. Uh, uh, oh, Commissioner Jackson. Uh, which Attorney General is going to, is the State Attorney General going to do this opinion or the U.S. Attorney General? That's it, a rhetorical it is only, question. It is only to the State Attorney General. It says Louisiana, Louisiana <coughs> State Attorney General. Yeah. So Jeff Landry's office is going to work on that. that yes, sir. Who gonna draft the letter to? Uh, the letter is already drafted. Can we see? Is it attached? Uh, it just simply it just simply requests that they render an opinion with regard to whether the parish can adopt the ordinance. Y'all gonna add the one we just talked about on there? I'm sorry. We gonna add the one we just talked about on there? The one that you just emailed us. Thirty-two. We gonna add oh, that one. Oh, uh, that's. That one is on the books and has been on the books for quite some time. 14 years. Yeah. Gotcha. Is that it, Commissioner Jackson? Okay. You How did this get on here as Cattle Parish Commission? Hmm? Hmm. I don't miss. Well, never mind. I'm good. Commissioner Jackson, I asked that last week, and I'm good. Mr. Everson said it because we voted on it from here, from the body. Just kind of. I'm sorry, you know, I did not hear that question. Was the question uh, how did this get on as the sponsor being categorized yes. commission? This is because you adopted a um, you adopted a uh, an item during the session that required this to be done to be in compliance with the item that you adopted. So this is a follow up on an item that was adopted by the body in your uh, first June meeting, and uh, this resolution is necessary to complete the instruction that was given by adopting that. I guess it's illegal well, and for And I guess uh, for, for clarity, the commission had, uh, had adopted, uh, uh, had voted to request the opinion. Mm -hmm. Technically, the attorney general requires that it be done by resolution. Mm -hmm. And that's what this does. Is this, it meets the technical requirements to request the, re the uh, attorney general's opinion uh, in accordance with what you all did at the last meeting. I guess it's illegal for us to gamble up here, but I kind of can take bets on how this might come back. But okay, if it's what, what we want to do. Uh, Maybe some odds out there, but okay. All right, I'm good. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Um, let's please vote on resolution number 35. Okay, and that motion carries with 10 in support, one in opposition, and one absent. That brings us to old business, uh, where item 19.1 is on your agenda today. It's to direct the administration, action item, uh, to direct the administration to make proposed changes to the NGO application process. Uh, this comes uh, from discussions in both the Audit and Finance and Appropriations Committees, and you'll find an attachment that uh, the administration provided uh, with some of those recommended recommendations. Discussed. Move. Move to adopt with the amended recommendation. Second. Second. Well, motion <coughs> motion Point by Commissioner Johnson to adopt with the adopted with the uh, accompanying uh, amended res rec recommendations. Amended recommendations and a second by Commissioner Lazarus. And I think Commissioner Burrell had a question. Order of information, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Um, 
I was a part of that appropriation committee. Unfortunately, I was on vacation. Uh, there was an issue that came up in this, and I wanted to see how it was treated. Uh, since I've been familiar with uh, nonprofits and working with one with 20 years, uh, that was a question that that we had in a previous meeting uh, before the last one about how in-kind contributions are treated uh, when uh, budgets are considered. Can, can Commissioner I Johnson, do you remember that? how in-kind contributions? Do you remember how in-kind contributions will be treated? In, in oh, they're already on the application, mm -hmm. so there's we'll there's nothing it. extra. They're included. Yeah, it's already included on the, the way, application okay, form. That's the only question I have because yeah. it is very important that in-kind contributions are included because if you were actually paying for those uh, in-kind services, it would be part of your normal budget. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner <clears throat> Burrell. Uh, Commissioner Jackson. Yeah, I'm just the one for the economic impact study required for all applications with economic development purpose. Um, what if it's their first time? Did we discuss what if it's the first time? It's today? a it's a projection of econo it's a projected economic impact. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if it's their first application and they don't have they have don't have measured economic impact, is that the question? Right. And so it's like it's like whenever a currently at, well at least if, if not by by um, by ordinance it's kind of by tradition that when someone applies to the economic development committee currently they are encouraged to present an, an economic impact study with their application even if it's a first-time application so this change would require it? Um, yeah got you on the front end and not the back end Right. 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 That's correct. Okay. Oh, and it doesn't matter who does the impact study, right? They just need to have one. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, anybody else on the board on this? Seeing no one. Seeing no one else. Let's vote. <coughs> And that motion carries with 10 in support, one in opposition, Mr. and Burke, one. Mr. Um, Burke, that should have been, that should have been a yes. I ended Burke, I ended up. Got it. Okay, let me uh, correct the record to reflect that uh, Commissioner Talaferro's uh, no vote um, that would show on the board uh, was mistakenly, um, uh, you know, entered into the machine, and it should appear as 11 votes in support and uh, one vote absent, and that is none in opposition. So that uh, carries, and then uh, that brings us to new business, where the first item uh, today is 20.1, which is to reappoint Mary Irvin to the North Caddo Hospital Services District Board of Directors. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Hopkins, a second by Commissioner Jones to approve. Any comment, Commissioner uh, Hopkins? Ms. Ms. Irvin, Ms. Irvin currently serves. Um, she does a good job, and she is asked to be reappointed. So. Uh, that's why I bring it forward to the full commission. Okay. Anyone else to comment on this? Seeing nobody, let's vote. And that motion carries with 11 in support, none in opposition, and one absent. Uh, the next item today is to request that administration fly Caterpillar's flags at half staff until the uh, until City Marshal Charlie Caldwell is laid to rest. Move to adopt. Second. second. Motion to adopt by <coughs> Commissioner Johnson, a second by Commissioner Stormy Gage Watts. Commissioner Johnson. Yes, um, I noticed that this is already down. I appreciate that, Dr. Wilson. Um, I also did a little bit more research. So if we could make, um, we can make contact with the governor's office so that we can get the other buildings yes, in, inside the parish to also yes, recognize yes, that sir, the we flags got need to be at half staff. <coughs> that will, that will yes, sir, we received, the, we received the letter today okay. from the governor already. All right, so we just need to make sure that the media gets it so that the other buildings uh, downtown yes, and across the parish will lower their flags as well. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson, for pointing that out earlier this week and getting that done. That's, that's a nice tribute to the marshal. Thank and you. the city marshal flag is also outside our building I saw that. at half mass as well. So, all right. Any anyone on the board on this item? Seeing no one, let's please vote.
That motion is adopted with 11 in support, none in opposition, and one absent. Uh, that brings us to communicating uh, reports. Any any other communiques and committee in committee reports that uh, people still need to raise? Commissioner still need to raise. Um, Commissioner Burrell. Well, I don't I don't see y'all's friend out there. I, I saw my uh, my mail <coughs> my mail shirt being flown out there. I understand that uh, little John Settle brought it down Monday. I happened to be on vacation and I was going to ask him whether or not he was actually trying to encourage me to run for mayor this year <laughs> uh, against my uh, colleague. Uh, he, he was uh, one of the individuals who did a lot of misinformation on my last mayoral race. I remember that uh, by putting out a lot of misinformation uh, uh, dealing with our nonprofit. So I was just hoping he would be here so I can I can engage him at this point, and uh, but uh, look like he, <clears throat> like the creepy he is. I guess he creeped out on us. <laughs> so again, uh, I, that's what I wanted to know. Since he, he decided to, to bring it and put it on the chair, that I was wondering why it was here today. I understood that he brought it Monday also. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Burrell. Any other communiques? Seeing no one. Any other late arrivals on citizens' comments, Mr. No, Mr. Clerk? We have no request for citizens' comments, late arrivals. All right. Well, can we have a motion? Um, Commissioner, how did y'all get up there without me noticing? Commissioner Jackson. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, Dr. Wilson, <coughs> I would, uh, do we know when we're going to do the um, redistricting maps? I'm probably, I don't want to do a, I don't want to do a community meeting in July because a lot of people take vacations and this year people will be getting ready to go back to school and so I've, I've been looking at August maybe to do that for your district yes but I don't do y'all plan to bring those that ordinance before us or how, how, how soon Jeff how soon do we intend to do that well I'd I, I, I'm not sure. I can check with the consultant and see okay. what we expect the next time frame to be. Okay. Because I'm, I'm anticipating folks going on vacation in July, and particularly with school starting early, they'll start getting prepping. So I, I, I did want to do a community meeting, uh, at least two, and July seems to be kind of out of the picture right now. It's like right up, it's like I think, what, next week? So I was thinking August, maybe in August, uh, to start looking at that time frame. And uh, I would like to have at that meeting the consultant as well as the parish attorney, the parish attorney's office, or the parish attorney to be available to answer questions um, about the redistricting process and, uh, and have the maps um, blown up in large size just for District 3 to be able to see. Would that be uh, Mr. Stephen Walker that you would get that from? Have some up there now. We just bring the same map. I just want the one for. I just want, want district, district three. I mean, yeah. Well, we'll consult with we'll provide that. We we'll work with them. On okay. That. All right. We just for your district, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Yeah, there's two out in the in the lobby right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe the big map to look at it in its totality, but definitely look at just district mm -hmm. three specific. If I could get that map. Mm -hmm. um, we had to get that from the. The consultant, he has the changes he made. Right, right, right. So he'll right, bring right. that for you. Okay. And uh, locations to be determined. Okay. So if we could get on that, I would appreciate it. Um, and then also, uh, is Patrick still here? I need to yes. get with. Okay, I'll get with him mm -hmm. on uh, some safe summer stuff that I need coming up. Other than that, that's it. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. Dr. Wilson and uh, Mr. Everson, I'd also like to try to get that information for District 6 okay. um, so that we can plan accordingly with our neighborhood associations to meet with constituents concerning uh, redistrict um, information. And I'd say this, uh, and I'll be done <clears throat> since we're having Bible study today. Uh, Matthew chapter 18 speaks on how we handle disagreements. Um, as Jesus was telling people, if you have an ought with your brother, you go to that brother. And if y'all can't settle it, you get two or three more. Yeah. And if you can't, you come before the full body and get it together. And wherever two or three are on one accord, there he will be in the midst. Yeah. 
immediately following that, he teaches Peter a lesson on forgiveness. At some point, we have to realize that forgiveness comes from the confession of our sins. I don't have a problem with people using the Bible to make their point. The problem I have as a pastor, as one who's called to ministry, is when it's appropriated and used in a way to fit our argument and it's taken out of context. So the only way to really be forgiven of a sin is to confess it. First John says, <laughs> you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So if you feel like you haven't done anything wrong, then no, you wouldn't feel like you owe anyone an apology. But if in your heart, if you're truly convicted by your sin, then you would feel like you owe someone an apology. It is up, that, up to that person to forgive you. They don't have to forgive you, but it's up to that person to forgive you. And what I would like for us to start doing is to find a way to come together on disagreements. We're not going to agree on everything, but to make sure that whenever we disagree on something, it remains within context. That we don't cater and use, uh, especially on a body that, in a sense, although we all may have our personal beliefs, still has a separation of church and state. And so if we're going to use the Bible, at least let's use it in its historical context. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 28 had everything to do with the children of Israel being disobedient to God. Right. Not the way we govern up here. Right, that's true. That's just out of context. I'm sorry. It has nothing to do with the way we govern. It has to do with our, the way the children of Israel were disobedient to God and the punishment that was coming because he was getting ready to send them back to Egypt. Okay, so if we're going to do stuff like that, let's keep it within context. And here again, we all don't have to agree on everything. We're going to be on different sides of the aisle. But let's make sure that we keep it within context. And if that means we're handling the business of this chamber, let's keep it there. And, hey, I love the Bible, but, you know, there are times that we need to govern within the context of this body. And so I would hope that we do that correctly. That way no one is misled and nothing is misconstrued. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Burrell. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just got off of uh, a vacation and, and came in, and I was a little bit offended um, doing public comments. Also, uh, having uh, reached my age and, and um, heard of, of many of the horror stories uh, that my parents passed on and grandparents passed on to me, and then people started using as um, the commission was just saying using the Bible to justify a lot of it, talking about, you know, if you're a Christian. Well, the history that I know also talked about the Crusaders, who were, who were also Christians, who also slaughtered many people in Europe, innocent people. So when you start tossing words around, I, I think you need to toss them around in the right context because you can offend many people. And when people start talking about Indians and this type of thing, you know, we are multicultural people. I don't think any one of us has only one particular line of blood uh, that runs in our veins. And I can go back and, 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 and pull from the white side, the black side, the Indian side, the Spanish side. If you go back, you, you, can, you can do that. And I just think it's rather offensive when people come down and, and, and say what you don't deserve. Yeah. Um, no, we weren't there during those times, but we are a result of those times. And a lot of the healing has not been done. And, you know, and I appreciate those who are on this, this dais because you try to work through it. But some of us that, that are, are over a certain age, we still don't understand the history because we won't, we won't actually go in and read it or try to understand it. Uh, and there are those in the, uh, today that are just not accepting the things that I accepted when I was a kid and had to and had to walk and talk to people with my head, with my eyes down. I was instructed to do that. We don't do that anymore. So times have changed and it's time for for us to educate those who are older that though you know if we don't you know those things are things of the past we're trying to heal and we'll still yes. heal yes. and and they need to to help work toward that we're not dividing if you want to talk about division <coughs> 
I don't know of anything more divided now because of politics. So, you know, we, we're just a, a multifaceted country and we're going to have to work through those issues. But those things are not, not yet over, Mr. President. I, I, I just wanted to make that comment because I was a bit offended at first, but I kind of understand when I started looking at people of certain ages. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Burrell. Seeing no one else on the board, we have a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All right. Thank you all. Uh, Commissioner Hopkins, can I visit you for a minute? Sure. Thank you. Oh. Yes,